All right, we're gonna. Uh, it's been a couple days. This is the uh, heat block sock, homemade. It seems like it's dry. This is all very stretchy. So we're gonna take it apart and check. Well, that popped off pretty easy. This feels all dry. Feel a little grease from the Vaseline, but that's about it. So let's pop it apart. Now again, I have these screw holes I put in here. They make popping the mold apart much easier because I just screw the screw in and then supposedly push it out. And we have somewhat of a failure. Somewhat of a success and somewhat of a failure. There's a hole here. Let's clean it up. This didn't attach. Something didn't work out. Let's peel the core out and see what I did wrong. Now this will all be cleaned up. So it didn't adhere here. I have a feeling what happened is some of the Vaseline got in it on our face. But in all reality, it's still almost usable. Because you can actually patch this. I've done it before with the other one. This is just overkill right here. Overflow, fill, whatever. And there's a tear right here. It's not really a tear. Like I said, I, it, it's greasy. I can feel it. So the Vaseline got in, you know, when I squished it down, Vaseline mixed up or got on an edge. And when it went to re-adhere, it didn't adhere to itself. But that's actually repairable. So it's a semi-success. Because this cleans up here. Like so. This is actually supposed to be like that. That's where the uh, that's where the wiring comes in for the, both the thermistor and the uh, heater core itself. This is where the heater core comes out. You have the actual nozzle. You have there's a bolt that clamps the heater core. This is actually repairable. And I'm going to show you how to repair it. So I'm going to clean it up, knock out any of the holes, and I'll be right back. Alright, I'm going to show you some of the cleanup. I already actually started, but um, you can actually just use scissors. That's what I'm using here. Get rid of the mold overlays this right here is nothing it's actually right here um what this was was expansion you know waste material when you squeeze in stuff squirts out that that's what i put these two slots in for was to let it release whatever they call it um clean up your holes as best you can a lot of this stuff won't really cut with a knife as you can see right here but if you can poke it and tear it. And this is just, you know, where the the bleed, where this was compressed against the block. You can see right here. This is the nozzle hole. It was pressed against the block. A little bit of it got in there. And all you do is just grab it. And it will usually tear right out. Where it's just junk material basically and then go over it and scrape off any little bits and pieces this is where the clamp screw is and it looks a little rough but it's actually not bad now there are two tears but we can repair or fix the tears and it's actually not all that hard I don't remember to stay inside the camera, don't I? 
And a lot of this little crap you don't even actually need to take out because the minute you press it into place it'll do it. As you can see there's a little tear right here. And actually the first one I ever did did the same thing right there. And there's kind of a big tear here where, as I said previously, I believe some of the Vaseline, just like right here. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that? You can see a little crack right there. That's, uh, I have a feeling that's where the Vaseline built up when I squished it out. The Vaseline was on the edge of it and it didn't adhere to itself. It basically separated. But that's easy to fix. Much easier. It's not a total waste. Take a little rubbing alcohol, preferably 90%. Clean the whole form piece, not the form, the actual piece. Basically what you're going to do is get rid of the Vaseline. And you just use a Q-tip and rub it over it with the rubbing alcohol. Now what you want to really do is get it in the crack that you're going to repair. And remove the Vaseline that initially stopped it make sure you get all that Vaseline out and this stuff is it's it's not delicate um, it'll actually take a little more abuse than you think and again if you tear it a little bit it's repairable so you know be gentle do you know don't deliberately tear it but if you do end up tearing it more Let's see what I'm doing here if you do end up tearing it more it's actually repairable and I'm gonna show you how to repair it right here right now make it look a little neater and cleaner now, now I got a tear right here to fix and I got a tear right here to fix this is kind of a biggie so how to fix the tear again make sure you have paper towel or rags or whatever clean it really well with rubbing alcohol matter of fact I think I'm gonna hit it again just to make doubly sure just clean it good get the you know rubbing alcohol in there and make sure you remove any Vaseline that's in the area you don't want the Vaseline there because that's the one and only thing the gasket stuff won't adhere to clean in this side this crack again make sure I get all the edges all the little faces and we should be good to go so I'm going to take another piece of paper here. Scrap. And then I want one of my little chunks of credit card here. Or you can use a uh, spatula or something, you know, a little knife, whatever. But it's nice to have some flexibility. And just squirt a little puddle of the caulk slash gasket maker, slash silicone, whatever you want to call it. You don't need a whole lot. And you find your crack. Open it up as best you can. And you're going to make a mess here on your fingers. So you can wear rubber gloves if you want. But you don't need to as long as you clean it up. And just spread some in there. This stuff will stick to itself and literally almost disappear. Make sure you get plenty. Make sure you actually get it inside the opening here. I'm going to spread a little over that crack. See that crack's almost disappearing? A little failure spot. Let it just go back down. Position it where you want it. And then basically squeegee away the excess. You have to do this kind of gently. I don't know if you can actually see how I'm doing it. Because the lighting is not great. But look at that. Sort of repaired. Sort of. I'm going to do this one here. Same thing. 
spread the crack open and just feed some in there. And that's it. Let it dry. That's where the old crack was. Can't even see it really anymore. And that's where the other crack is. And you can still sort of see it. It doesn't meet perfectly. But. I mean, come on. It's a little non-seen hot end sock. And as long as it works, who cares, right? I wouldn't like it to seal right up. And that's it. Let it dry. Alright. Alright, it's been like an hour. Um, this stuff is pretty much dry in an hour as long as it's exposed to the air. Um, you can see. All held. All repaired. You know, within reason. You can still see the crack. And this takes a full 24 hours to fully cure. But. It's there. It's done. Now, is it the prettiest thing in the world? Absolutely not. Will it work? Well, let's find out. It just snaps on. Let's try the new one. And, uh, very difficult to see with the camera in the way. I'm trying to do it by the camera. All right. There you go. Seems to fit. Well, that works. And again, it's not perfect. If you've ever seen those E3D units, they're not perfect either. I can see right here, I have a little uh, bump out. I could probably clean it up. But it looks like it's just peachy. You should do a PID tune now. Because your temperatures are going to fluctuate differently. And you really should do a PID tune. That's it. You should be able to Get a much more even temperature out of your hotter.